Hello and welcome. Let's talk about statements. I'm almost certain that you use words every time. In mathematics, there's a whole lot more to making statements and making sure they're either true or false. Would you like to find out more? Well then, let's begin with a simple game of the corporal, the judge, and the thief. It goes like this. A person, X, heads off to the police station to report an incident of his missing ducks. In his report, he accuses a person Y of stealing two fully grown ducks, one black, the other brown, from his barn. He states further that the ducks have been missing for about three days. The corporal investigates and finds that person Y indeed has two fully grown ducks, one black, the other brown in his barn. Person Y denies the allegation. He declares that he is totally oblivious of the presence of the ducks in his barn. The matter is brought before the judge who questions person Y in the following way. Did you steal the ducks? Person Y responds plainly, Absolutely not, my lord. The judge replies, Very well then, can you prove this? Person Y answers almost before the judge finishes questioning. I haven't been home for two weeks. I only returned about an hour ago. Before we continue, you must know that person X has 12 ducks, person Y, 7. This makes 19 ducks in total. Now here's the question. Did person Y steal the ducks? Or is person X just a mean old man? In mathematics, when we don't know if a statement is true or false, we say it is an open statement. First, let's summarize the statement of accusation as reported by person X. He stole two out of my 12 ducks. Sentence one, accusation. He stole two of my 12 ducks. Now, let's summarize the statement of defense as established by person Y to the judge. I did not steal two ducks. I've always had seven. Sentence two, defense. I did not steal two ducks. I've always had the seven. In mathematics, the two statements are represented like this. X plus Y equals 19. This means that the only thing that's true in both statements is that there are 19 ducks between persons X and Y. 19 ducks in total, right? Great! But we cannot say if one statement is true and the other is false, or vice versa. Because at the time, X had 12 ducks, or let's say X equals 12, and Y had 7 ducks, or Y equals 7. At a different time, X had 10 ducks, or X equals 10, and Y had 9, or Y equals 9. One other thing that sticks out is that both statements cannot be true at the same time or false at the same time, which makes them open statements. Let's think even further. Pretend that the statement of accusation made by person X is true. Mathematically, the statement appears something like this. 10 plus Y equals 19. This would also mean that the missing link to the truth is the fact that person Y now has 9 ducks instead of 7 because 10 plus 9 equals 19. Remember, I mentioned that the only thing that's true in the case of persons X and Y is the fact that there are 19 ducks in between them. Pretend again that the statement of defense established by person Y to the judge is true. Mathematically, we would have a statement like this. 12 plus Y equals 19. This would mean that person Y indeed has 7 ducks because 12 plus 7 equals 19. In both examples, we can see that X was 10 at a point and 12 at another point. Again, 
this makes the statement of both persons X and Y open statements because we can't tell which is true or false. Now, what is a closed sentence or closed statement? It's simple. A closed sentence is always true or always false. For example, 19 is an odd number. It's always a true statement. 11 is an even number. It's always false. And so on. In closed statements, the values of things are always known. So, if we recall the last example of the missing ducks, we could refer to both X and Y as variables because their real values are unknown. At a point, X was 12 and then 10, Y was 7 and then 9. Variables things that have unknown values or values that can change. Let's look at other examples. X plus 3 equals 8. In this example of an open sentence, X is a variable. W plus Q equals 2. In this example, W and Q are both variables. We cannot leave open statements unattended to right? What I mean to say is, when statements are open, we need to solve them. We need to find a way to resolve the sentence to make it either true or false. When sentences are open and no one can tell if they are true or false, it becomes difficult to find out what things exactly are or the way they should be. Now, you need to follow me a bit more closely at this point because solving open sentences could be a bit tricky. If we were to solve the open sentence x plus 3 equals 8, we need to find a way for the variable to be alone so that it can have a value. This way we will know the truth about that variable. Did you get that? So. Think about it this way. If person X continues to accuse person Y of stealing two ducks, a witness, let's say person Z, could help the judge determine the truth. Person Z could say to the judge, My lord, person X was at fault all along. He let the dog stray into person Y's barn. Just to make everyone think person Y is a thief. I have these pictures to show for it, my lord. This makes it much easier to say that person X has always had 12 ducks instead of 10. We could then say that X equals 12. Again, if we were to solve for X in the expression X plus 3 equals 8, we need to find a way to make X stand alone so that we can find the real value that belongs to it. How do we go about this? It's quite simple. Notice that the expression didn't tell us that x equals 1, or x equals 2, or x equals 3, or x equals 4, and so on. It only says whatever value x has, 3 added to what x currently has, and now everything equals 8 but we don't know the exact value that is inside of x. To avoid making mistakes, we could say this. Whatever is added to x, which is 3, should be taken away from 8. The same should also be taken away from 8, because adding 3 to x made it have 8. Let's see how it all works out mathematically. Let's remove or subtract 3 from both x and 8. Once the 3 is removed from x, x stands on its own. We need to do the same for 8, like this. Now, let's go back to replace x with 5 in the first expression. That says x plus 3 equals 8. This is to let us know if removing 3 from both x and 8 was the right thing to do. Remember the original x we had before, solving for x was 
Now, let's replace x with 5 to see what happens. So, 5 plus 3 equals what? Yes! You guessed it! 5 plus 3 equals 8! Before I finish off this lesson, here are some more examples of closed and open sentences for you. Now, we have come to the end of this lesson. Let's recall some of the things we've learned so far, shall we? Right then. 1. Open sentences can either be true or false, depending on what values are used. 2. Closed sentences are always true or false. 3. The value we don't know is called a variable. It can also be called an unknown. 4. Solving means finding a value for the variable that makes a sentence true. Let's recall a couple of new words just before we draw the curtains on this lesson. Words like absolute. When something is absolute, it is complete with no possibility of change. You can use a word like this. I absolutely agree with the statement you made just now. Establishing something means you make it clear and well-grounded using examples, explanations, or experiments. You can use the word like this. GD established his honesty by refusing to lie to the principal. How interesting was that? I hope you learned something interesting and how important statements are in finding out if something is true or false. Until next lesson, bye for now.